Well, hello, you're back with me, Cool Dude Clem, the coolest nerd in the world. And today I'm going to do some experiments. Because I think it's time to get back to doing experimenting with electronic stuff. Now in this setup here, you can see you've got a speaker and a little circuit board. And this circuit board is connected to this cassette deck here. And we'll go into why that's connected in just a minute. Now this little circuit is a square wave generator that I've made. It uses a 555 timer chip and will produce a square wave at a high frequency and you can adjust it with this variable resistor here. And here you can see a couple of transistors which are simply just to buffer the chip's output and uh, boost the amperage a little bit. Now I'm going to connect up the speaker and adjust the frequency and when I turn it low enough you should be able to hear a high pitched squeal. Don't know if the microphone's picking that up. Now the thing is, if I was to put an audio signal into pin 5, which is that pin right on the end there, what would happen is the duty cycle and the frequency of the square wave would change according to what voltage is at pin 5. And to cut a long story short, if I was to connect the speaker to the chip's output, we would hear the original sound that's coming into it, as I shall now demonstrate. Now we'll start this tape playing and I'll connect the speaker to the output I'm going to connect it to the transistors because if I connected it directly to the chip's output I could damage the chip and I don't want to do that but the, out the transistors is basically just the same as the chip's output just at a higher, slightly higher, higher, slightly higher current when we connect it have a basic class B amplifier. Excuse the crappy music. That's something I did a long time ago when I was just starting out with sequences and things like that. Now I could connect it directly to pin 3 on the chip which is the output but um, I did do this earlier and it sounded terrible because I'm simply overdriving what the chip can handle. As you can hear, I'm not going to do that for too long, but to the transistor's output. As you could see, or rather, as you could hear, it works. Now the reason I'm making this video is because something has been plaguing on my mind, and that is, what if I was to connect a tape head to the chip's output instead of a speaker, and would it make any kind of recording on the tape? Well, in this video, I'm going to try to answer that. I have a tape transport that I took out of a toy tape player. It was just a piece of junk, but also this transport is a bit of junk as well. It's all plastic and hardly any metal on it, but should still answer the question. So anyway, let's get right on and do that. Well, okay, we're about to do a test recording have my little function generator connected up to the tape head through this capacitor. Now I'm going to start the other cassette deck playing. And I've got it also hooked up to my amplifier so I can hear what's actually coming in. Now we're making a recording on the tape, maybe? I don't know if this is going to make any kind of recording on the tape. But we'll see what happens. I'm going to record about a minute of music and see what, see what we get. I'm going to do this all in one shot so you know there's no trickery being used. Okay, that should be enough of that. We'll just stop this one as well. Now I'll take that tape that I just recorded and put it in this deck. Now I'm going to disconnect the chip from the uh, cassette deck because I don't know how loud the output's going to be and I don't want to possibly damage the chip by too loud inputs. Let's just play this. Turn the volume up. Oh well, we, uh, we do have something. Oh 
Okay, it's a little bit distorted, but I didn't expect absolutely superb hi-fi results from it. But the fact that it actually made a recording on the tape that's eligible of what the original sound was, that's just incredible. Okay, it's time for another experiment now. This time I have disconnected the capacitor from the head. So the head is now getting the pulse DC from my little function generator. And I've lowered the power supply down to 6 volts, so hopefully nothing should get damaged. Okay, so I'll start that recording. I've wound the tape back to the beginning. And I'll start this cassette tape player. <laughs> I have no idea if it's making a recording or anything, but we'll see. Again, disconnect the chip from the headphone output just in case it's too loud and damages the chip, because we don't want that to happen. We'll start it playing, and wait for the leader to get by, and we'll see if anything happened. Okay, it looks as if this time nothing has gotten onto the tape. Actually, I can hear it very slightly if I turn the volume up all the way. So I think we can say there that that didn't really make a recording. Next experiment I'm going to do is using the chip as a bias oscillator. Okay, so this is experimenting using the chip as the bias oscillator. Let's just go over how this is connected up. Like in the first experiment, I've got this capacitor, which is a 1 microfarad non-electrolytic, connecting the output of the oscillator and the head. We've got this capacitor here, when I can find it, which is connecting the output, the headphone output of the cassette deck also to the head. Right, let's see if this works. Let's just rewind the tape back to the beginning, which I already have. Start that recording. We'll start this one playing. I've only got 10% of my memory card left. I'm running, rapidly running out of memory card space, so I have to wrap this up quickly. Of course we have to have a bassy part, which I don't think is going to record very well. Not to mention that the tape that I'm recording from does seem to be pretty noisy. This sort of thing always Hutchins happens. Hutchins called me a shithead. Oh, we will have to pardon that. That's uh, me mucking about. Anyway, let's see if any of that recorded. Well, we have a recording on there, definitely. But there seems to be some kind of distortion. Probably just needs more bias. I can't say that doing it this way is the best way to do it. But making an actually functioning, working tape recorder will be another project for another video. Okay, well I've been experimenting with repeating the first part of the experiment. Except this time, I've put a 1000 microfarad capacitor between the pulse generator and the head. And surprisingly, it does seem to make a pretty good recording. There is still a little bit of distortion there, but I will record something onto the tape to prove that to you of how good this works. I'll start this playing. And you will see in a minute, actually I think this might be overdriving at the current output, so I'm just going to turn that down a little bit. <laughs> okay, let's um, stop that now. I have to talk over this because I don't know how copyrighted this music is and I don't really want to get into any 
difficulties. Just take that tape out and put this tape in. Again, I'm doing this all in one shot so we don't get into... I mean, so you know that this is not an edited video. And there's the recording. Let's hear a direct hookup. Okay, that's where I stopped recording. Actually, there's another recording I made on there. No, I haven't got anything to say, so I just went back to my seat. I've got to keep my big, hairy, scary husband under control. What is that? That's amazing, though. And there's another one, the experiments. So I think we can say all in all, that's a pretty um, interesting experiment. I think Cassette Master might have enjoyed this one. And before we go, we'll just go over a quick schematic. So this is the basic circuit. Got the all-important 555 timer right there. And the transistors to buffer it. It's not important the make and model of the transistors, just so long as one is NPN and the other is PNP, and they're both a matched pair. This is where the audio goes into the chip. And this is where it comes out and you connect either a speaker or a tape head. And that's basically it. Now I know some of you are asking yourselves, well, what's the point of that? I might just as well be making a recording with no bias because it sounds exactly the same. But as a matter of fact, the recording I made with the chip sounds way better than a biasless recording. I'm making a biasless recording right now. I've got the tape head connected up to the headphone output on my other cassette deck, as you can see. Copying some music onto the tape and I know this is going to be absolutely safe because you're not going to know what the song is because of the quality. But anyway, I'm going to do a voice recording on this. So I'll just switch this over to microphone. And just turn the level down a bit so it's still good enough for the head. I am now making a recording onto this tape. Some of you may have heard, heard of tape recorders with DC bias an AC bias. Well here's a recording with no bias. Absolutely no bias whatsoever. You may have heard of tape recorders with DC bias and AC bias. Here's a tape recording with no bias. Anyway, let's see how that came out. that explains it. Anyway, this video is getting a bit long now, so I'm going to go now. So, until next time, goodbye. <laughs>